Good afternoon. We are in Florence, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, not only in Europe. We are at the Heart Failure Association Annual Congress, which attracted more than 6,000 people from all over the world. And I am glad to say that during this Congress, we have for the very first time presented the new 2016 Heart Failure Association European Society of Cardiology Guidelines on the management of heart failure. This time we covered acute heart failure and chronic heart failure. We covered diagnosis and management. I would like to briefly summarize what is new in the guidelines, what are the major differences from the previous guidelines and what are the most practical issues in my opinion. I had the privilege to chair the task force committee which was composed with 21 authors so I would like only to thank all my co-authors for such a very hard and tedious work. So number one in these guidelines for the first time we are basing the we are suggesting, we are recommending to base the diagnosis on heart, of heart failure on the probability. This probability of the disease in patients with suspected heart failure should be assessed based on careful clinical history, on clinical evaluation and on the ECG. And if you have at least one positive sign that the patient may have heart failure, then we need to go for natriuretic peptide assessment. If you are working in the circumstances where natriuretic peptides are not assessed, then go directly for echocardiography. Echocardiography remains the key technique to validate, whether, to verify whether the patient has got a structural or functional abnormality of the myocardium. This is number one. The next development regarding the diagnosis process is a recognition that we have a huge spectrum of heart failure patients with heart failure with ejection fraction about 40 percent and now we introduce the new entity we are calling it my, uh, heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction so patients with heart failure and ejection fraction between 40 to 49 percent we believe that uh, identification of this new group heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction would allow us to stimulate more research but also novel therapeutic approaches this is extremely important and regarding the Therapy. I know that uh, some of my colleagues already covered the issue of uh, uh, pharmacological therapy. This time we developed a completely new algorithm how to treat our patients with heart failure and re reduced ejection fraction. I would like to focus only a little bit on heart failure in acute setting. This is extremely important. For the first time ever we came up with the idea that heart failure, if, this is, uh, if, if patients are acutely decompensated, that needs to be treated as soon as possible, diagnosed and treated. So in, we introduce the concept, the sooner the better. It is quite similar to the concept and to the whole approach used for patients with acute coronary syndrome. So in other words, if you have a patient with a suspected acute heart failure, make sure that the whole diagnostic process is completed within the first two, three hours and the treatment is initiated. We also developed a very nice acronym, I believe nice, acronym called CHAMP, which stays for underlying clinical conditions in acute setting which needs to be identified and treated. This is acute coronary syndrome, this is arrhythmia, this is a pulmonary embolism, this is a, uh, also uh, all those uh, underlying condition which needs to be treated and mechanical uh, complication needs to be treated according to the ESC, ESC guidelines. And finally I would like to stress that these patients are often congestion and some of them might be hypoperfused. So this is why we recommend to base their clinical assessment on the evaluation of only two things. Congestion, so whether the patient is wet, means congested, and whether the patient is hypoperfused. If hypoperfused, then the patient is so-called cold. And uh, having this kind of approach, uh, we, we, we suggest a very clear algorithm for the therapy. There are several novel issues and I would like to convince you to get back to the guidelines, read them line by line, and actually implement them in clinical practice. Thank you.